Aeon. Today I have the fun of replacing a reversing valve in this beast. Sometimes they have the reversing valves just, you know, in the other compartment. Easy to get to. This one here they put it in the condenser section. So you get to take this uh, little funny shaped cover off. And behind the funny shaped receiver, you have the reversing valve. So this is where I like to uh, figure out the best way to remove it and put it back in without destroying the new one, of course. So instead of trying to cut or unweld these large pipes with the reversing valve up there against the panel, what I like to do is just find the best places to cut the pipes, leave them attached, remove the reversing valve, then remove those pipes and braze them into the new one where I could do it with more care then bring that monstrosity back into it. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just using the uh, wire brush on this copper to clean up, I'm gonna make a cut here and here, unbolt this receiver, take it out of the way. I think that's gonna make the job also a lot more easier. I kinda of wish these wires didn't run right between here, <laughs> but I'll have to get those out of the way somehow, going over to the blower. So it's gonna be fun. This is certainly sort of a pain in the ass, mainly because, you know, working in this hole, you're constantly scratching yourself, not scratching the head up here. But getting ready to make my last cut, got the wires loose. I'm pretty confident that when I cut this last pipe, which is, you know, seven eighths for the freaking uh, discharge line, got like one and an eighth or whatever that is. Maybe larger for the uh, other ports. Yeah, gonna fit that through there. Okay, looks like I did make a decent decision where I cut each of these pipes because this did come out as one piece. You can see the size of these lines. The wire brush that one just a little bit more on the back side. Or use sand cloth, but I usually hit these all up, you know, with the, the wire wheel before I even cut them. Gets them pretty clean touch it up with some sand cloth so there's the beast anchor this up out here somehow and put each port into the new one have it all welded up nice before I uh, stick it back in there just took out the larger pipes and if you look down in here you definitely see that the uh, center port is stuck between so that thing didn't want to go anywhere. That's what happens. Okay, working on the reversing valve out here. There's the uh, old one. As I showed, it was stuck in between. And here's the new one. What I did is I went ahead and brazed in the ports. These are the ones that would be a mother to braze in with this up against the wall in those things. I don't know what they're thinking. So we pretty much gotta remove the other tubes. So all I do is cut them and just swage them. If I could swage them, I swaged the uh, 7 8 gas line because that's how big my swaging set goes. But of course I don't have anything to swage that. I believe that's an inch and an eighth. So I just put on couplers, went ahead and brazed them on with, before, on one side, so don't have to worry about it in there. I blew it out with nitrogen and everything. So, and the nice thing about brazing something like this external is you can see the bead or weld. You can examine it, it looks pretty good. Chances of there being a leak, pretty low. If you weld this in there, you're gonna have a bunch, it's just gonna be ugly and shitty and good chance of a leak. And then when you have to re weld it, that's gonna suck. So, I brazed these in out here, clamped up. Uh, wet rags around here did one then cooled made sure it was cool did another one you know and so forth should be good now when I do the brazing to actually insert this beast back in there it's, nothing's going to be in very close proximity with the uh, reverse valve I shouldn't have to put any wet rags on there so that is it and this if I got everything <laughs> orientated back the way it was let me idea is for it to go back into place yeah, which is basically what's up here so this line goes here let's get one of them on there she 
kind of see there's the wiring that was in the way. That's gonna clamp up there. This switch one's gonna go back there. The only one that's gonna be really hard to weld is this one back there. So not exactly sure I'm gonna reach that one yet. This is a little peculiar doing this. I don't know, I almost should have just taken this whole piece off. But okay, got the heart of the beast back in there. The well, difficult weld was this one back in here. Challenge not to fry anything, but put on screen the photo. It looks like I got the weld. I just swaged this beast, so I'm gonna put this back in next. Okay. I should have just taken that panel off in the first place. I looked at it and I didn't. I was reaching through there, but it gave me a little more room and especially took off the sharp edge right here. So, yeah, it wasn't too difficult to take that panel off at all. So I got everything back on. More swages that I did in the field instead of using couplers. I only had to use three couplers for those large lines. These two lines and, and then that hot gas line over there. Or three, li three big lines and then the hot gas line I swaged. Looks like I'm about got it. Just got it under pressure test. Got my filter dryer installed. Looking pretty good. Won't even know that was changed. <laughs> so, uh, but it was changed. The old one's down there. Anyway, yeah, time to start a long vacuum process. Hope the sucker works good. Hope there's no other issues, like a control issue where it was cycling the reversing valve erratically. In that case, it could just hang that up again, but. I don't think so because it had uh, I had differential pressure, good 100 psi or so, I believe. When I got here, I was running and heating, and I flipped the switch right here. is a manual uh, uh, override basically on these switches. This closes the contact for you, and that is HP R1, which is the the reverse and valve relay. So I switched that, and the reverse and valve clicked. And it went to that position you saw on that reversing valve, which was halfway. Pressure stayed pretty much equalized. And I switched it back a couple times. It just stayed there, which is what it did to me the first time. So that kind of makes me think the reverse valve is just bad. Doing the evacuation. Just got the uh, lines wrapped up again. Is always fun. Got another cut doing so. Looks like we're pretty good. So, I mean, at a glance, maybe somebody wouldn't even know I replaced that. Clamp in there. The welds should look pretty factory or better than factory, maybe sometimes. <laughs> Especially if it's a good one. Time for me to put this panel back on. Wait for this sucker to evacuate. It's been a long day on this bastard, but she's purring. Almost got all the refrigerant in there. Got 25 pounds of the 26.5 pounds that it takes, so I'm about there. Got the unloader unplugged. Plus the override. It always makes it fun to charge these Aeon units when the unloader is constantly cycling on the duty cycle. Oh, and it just turned off on me. Which sucks. Right about there, I'm like done charging. I probably overcooled the space. The override only does so much. But I cycled the reverse and valve and it, it switched without hesitation, so that was good. I meant to come over here and test it after I got the charge in it. Okay, let's check out this reverse and valve. <laughs> Sounds a little better. We're in heating.
suction's pulling down. Before it would get kind of stuck. Now this thing might be a little pissed off, being that there are other valves and whatnot. It probably doesn't take too kindly to uh, just pop it, but I got three something over 150 real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. Back in the cooling there. And cooling was what was not working. differential there it's a minimum of what you want across the TXV now about 120 it's going up back up to its normal cooling pressure so we're good I already checked it I'm gonna hook the, uh, the loader back up yeah it's already cycling and I don't think this thing was following any of my overrides yeah it keeps jumping back so maybe because the network's broken. I don't know. Back to my earlier, I had a forty-something degree supplier, but just switched it to heat for a minute. So it's doing its thing. My jumper, just in case. I was just trying to keep this dang thing on long enough to get the refrigerant in there satisfying shutting off. I didn't bring up my service tool, which does a little better job at doing the overrides. Sometimes all I'll do is unplug the network when I do that. <laughs> Pressure hasn't even gone up high enough to bring the outdoor fan motor back on. Pretty amazing there. What are we down to? No, it should be on. One of my overrides might be screwing that thing up. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. She's running now. Probably wouldn't hurt to put that cover back on. All right, so I gotta wrap up. Staying here kind of late today to get this done. So, it kind of seems like my video is not widescreen enough. I don't know what's going on, but the Samsung system took a big update a couple days ago. I don't know if it's an Android or Samsung, but even the Samsung, you know, camera app buttons are all changed again. A bunch of things are changed on the phone. Got to get used to it. Screwing me up. So, okay, I hate that when you're used to certain things like the camera and video buttons and then they freaking just abruptly move them around and change settings. It really sucks. So, anyway, with that, this was it's just a quick video. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you guys later.